Well, it's my bag time. I spend my money so you don't have to spend yours, as the old saying used to go. I've got a few things here. One of the things I've already opened up, that's why it's facing the wrong way, so you know, you still want to be a surprise. These are a couple of heat sinks, cooling fan kit things. So these do a range of models. Yeah, I've got this from my Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. It's running as a web server. I want to make sure it's got decent cooling on it. So the case I've got on it, it's got a built-in fan, but it's not very good. It's got a fan directly onto a heat sink. Instructions for the 4B Plus and 3 3B Plus. So these are what I'm interested in. Thermal tapes, yep. There's a version for the 4. Not too dissimilar really, just slightly different placements. So here's the kit for the three. Now this got some little heat sinks in here as well. So that little blue pad there is the heat sink for device underneath the unit, which I think is the RAM, is it? I'm not sure. So that's under there. That's what the blue pad's for. It's got a copper heat sink and then you've got the stick on. So there's a big thick one there as well, which has like a spacer. Um because it's got different heights on the board, obviously. Well I better check it itself with heat, I'm not just assuming that am I? Supposed to be self-adhesive. I had one of these before and it's just a plain thermal pad. Yeah, that's sticky. Cool. That's actually adhesive. Great. And so is that one. So they're both adhesive tapes. So that's exactly what I wanted. Before I had one which was just a thermal pad. It wasn't actually adhesive. It's just a thermal pad. There's no way I would have held the thing on there. So, yeah, that was a disaster. Anyway, they look nice enough. Look like decent quality. Be a 5 volt fan, I expect. I don't know what it says it was, actually. It's on there. Doesn't. I think it's five volts anyway. Makes sense to be a five volt fan, but don't assume that. I've had units which had a twelve volt fan which running at five volts, which is a bit risky. And the other pack here, which I didn't show you, is the one for the full, which is a slightly different setup. Nothing too exciting. Just some cable ties, three mil by one fifty mil, cheap as. I was just getting really low on these things. I only had about ten left, I think. So three stocking from China because it's cheaper to get them in China than to get locally. Don't forget to put links for everything down below for all these items. It's a USB-C to USB-C cable. It says 100 watts rated. This looks like a decent quality cable. It wasn't cheap, well, it wasn't the cheapest price. I put that it, was, um, it was a good price for what it is. Nice corded flex as well. I quite like these. But yeah, C to C. I didn't have any C to C cables, so I thought I'd better get one since I started getting a few bits and pieces which have USB-C on them. It's going to be a problem if I don't have the necessary cables in the future, so I thought I'd better start getting some. I'm, I'm quite late to the party of USB-C, I know lots of other people have been using them for years, and I'm only just starting to get this stuff. What earth is that? Ah, oh, okay. A clean cloth. These are some laser glasses. These are for using with lasers, to say. 180 to 532 nanometer. It's actually got it marked on the lens here, which is a bit more reassuring. It's got it marked over here as well. It's also got some other specs written on there, which I don't understand. Let's just have a look. You see that mark in there? So 180 to 315. And is it LB6 plus, does it say? IR LB3, 315 to 532 nanometer. DIRM, so that light flitting. And LB5. Is it DI RM? Yeah, it is. That's what that one says on that side. So, they should be good for that laser engraver I picked up from Banggood not long ago. Which is why I got them, because I wanted to have some high quality glasses. These were, I think they're about $40 or something like that. They weren't that cheap. So, a bit more trust in them. You don't want to buy the cheapest because it's your eyesight that's at risk. Get the good ones. So, that's a bit more reassuring, it comes in a decent case and stuff as well, so I believe these are decent ones. I actually really need to get stuck into that laser engraver. I haven't really used it that much. I did it on my desk here. I put the click like and subscribe engraving on the desk, that's what I use that for. Um, that's basically all I've done. <laughs> I need to get a computer set up with it and get software running with that sort of stuff. And I'll probably do that in my other room, my other lab, where it's a bit more ventilation going on there. And do it in there. Most likely, or maybe in my garage, I might still do it in there. But yeah, I need to play with that. It'd be good once I get that going. Screws. 
So these aren't particularly exciting. These are just some three millimeter screws with uh, built-in washers. It gives them a large surface area. So if you're trying to pin down something like a piece of plastic or something like that, you're trying to do that. It increases the surface area, reduces the chance of damage and digging in that sort of stuff. I didn't have any of these. I've been meaning to get some, so I've got some. This is a local item. Not too exciting. But it's for something I'm trying to fix right now. I did a little video, a little short video on my ride on lawnmower, which is broken again. <laughs> Basically, the mower deck has had some problems with the bearings, so I managed to source some local bearings. So these should be the right ones. Uh, 604 NSE. That's the kind of bearing this is. Alright, that's the bearing that was in it. So I managed to find some the same. The only problem I've got is that the actual housing that this fits into has all been chewed out and it's really sloppy. It's probably got maybe three or four millimeters of clearance, so I need to do some work on that to repair the housing. I was actually tempted to try and get some bigger bearings and fit them in the housing after I machined it or something. I thought, nah, I'll just go with this. And I build the housing up, I'll just weld it up and um, build it up again with some weld and shove these in. Maybe use some JB weld if I've got some or something equivalent. I've got something I picked up in my mailbag not long ago actually. Some uh, metal adhesive, they call it, which I think is basically like JB World. I guess I'll find out. But I'm going to build up with that and we'll see what happens. But uh, the main thing is that these things don't rattle around in the holes because if I do, it's going to be a problem. So I've actually done several videos on my lawnmower, but I don't think I've ever released any of them actually. I think I've still got them all sitting there because they're a bit more mechanically orientated and welding and stuff like that. I think I've done a couple maybe, maybe one or two on that. But any kind of mechanical repair videos I've done haven't done very well on my channel because obviously my channel is not focused on mechanical repairs it's electronics so I haven't really done much but I do have I think maybe half a dozen videos on my lawnmower and mechanical repairs and things like that I've done like fixing the steering rack and things like that I've done all sorts of repairs to it and this is the latest one so I might actually do like a little series on it so you may see me do some videos on that in the upcoming future or I may just leave them sitting there I don't know but um, I'll record in the village anyway I'll do something but yeah let me know if you're interested in mechanical repairs and if you think I should post the videos or not, because I've, I've got about half a dozen of them. Oh, so it's a big box here, I think I know what's in here already, based on the weight of it. And I think my ram knife needs sharpening. It's struggling with this. Well, it comes with some new fuses. Well, I'll turn it upside down and get out of the box, so it's probably upside down now. <laughs> Guess we'll find out in a second. It is upside down. That's not unsurprising. This the over. Oh no, I'm going to probably start in everywhere. There we go. So, it's a new auto transformer. So, I've already got an auto transformer over here, just tucked in the corner here. It's only a small one. 500 VA which has done me okay up to this point but when I've been doing some repairs on those electrofusion wheels it's been struggling because it's actually too powerful for it and I've actually had smoke coming out of it once I thought that's not good so I thought oh, I better upgrade and get another one this housing will come off So, it looks like it's a bit worse for wear, like it's been dropped a fair bit. That's not what I want, is it? Hmm. It's even ripped the bloody metal here with that screws. Ripped the metal out of it. That's going to take some repairs. I'll fix that. It's unfortunate. Not the seller's fault, it's packed well in polystyrene, it looked nice. Obviously it's just been roughly handled in the post and they've been throwing it around. Uh, it's okay, it's not unsurmountable, it just requires a bit of minor work to get it back where it should be. Luck it will screw together, I'll take the screws out, flatten it back out, put it back on, maybe glue it down, get it flat again. But yeah, it's like the whole housing is bent. That's disappointing, but oh well. Anyway, it's a uh, slightly bigger one. It's a 2000 VA, that's good. Now it comes with a trip plug, which is awesome. What fuse this thing take? 250 volt fuse, 8 amp, 8 amp fuse in there, which is fine because the drawer that I'll have is probably about 5 amps, 5 to 6 amps at most, so 
I wanted to make sure I got a bit of headroom on it. Hey, there we go, it's down there. <laughs> Quick sc the screws back in. <laughs> but yeah, I need to do some work on this to fix this panel up. Bend that back out again, I'll take it off and fix it. So like I said, not the seller's fault, it's been roughly treated in post. So it can do, in theory, up to 300 volts output. That'll feel smooth and nice anyway, that doesn't feel like it's been damaged there. The shaft feels like it's alright, so that's all fine. Up here it says 6.6 .6 amps. So, that's interesting, 8 amp fuse, 6.6 .6 amp rating. Hmm, might change that fuse to be a smaller one. What's it saying here? It's got different models, what does it officially say? What model number is this one? Do you see a model number? It doesn't say a model number, does it? Hmm. KVA, well, 2000, be 2000, that one there. So, full flying down, says 8 amp fuse. Hmm, even though it's rated at 6.3 amps. I think that's pushing it a little bit. But I thought the ratings would be inflated, right? So, you get stuff in China often, the ratings are inflated. Unless you're paying top dollar for stuff, then it does seem to be real. But when you're buying more budget focused stuff, the ratings are often inflated, sometimes by significant amounts. But this is basically three times bigger than my existing one. So, well, in theory, four times bigger, but physically it's about three times bigger. So, uh, I'm fairly confident this will be absolutely fine for everything I need to do. I will have to do some electrical testing on this to make sure it's got the earthing and that sort of stuff and make sure it's electrically safe. You never quite know. It's just like my existing one, it's got digital readout. It's basically exactly the same model, just a bigger version. Uh, and it's got two sockets on the front which could be handy right now we've got time for the last item now this is a little bit different as in this isn't a broken piece of test gear this is just a piece of test gear I bought it's just been calibrated apparently although I didn't get a calibration record with it there's no information about what its calibration specs actually are there's no record of it so although it's been calibrated I think that's just been someone's adjusted it potentially but not actually done much with it or just done a verification even just to make sure it works with no data to me so calibration is pretty much meaningless but at least it's been checked at the very least so here's the back exciting isn't it got cheap ID as most things do well there's zero and there is the front it's a Solotron 7061 systems voltmeter so this can do AC and DC volts AC and DC current ohms, two wire and four wire. That is the theory. I haven't tested all these things yet. I've only checked DC voltage so far um, up to 10 volts. I sort of checked so far just to make sure that it did have some kind of life in it. This is a seven and a half digit multimeter which is nice. Now as you may have noticed it's got these special connectors. It's got one in the back as well. Now thankfully because I already have a Solotron multimeter it uses exactly the same kind of cable and the cable I purchased actually purchased from the guy I bought this from. So this cable here I purchased I don't know, middle of last year it would have been, late last year, um, to go with my other Solotron multimeter, the 7075. Okay, what's the number? 7075 is an older version, which I purchased to use with that. But it's the same plug, so I can use it on here as well, which is great. The only problem is if I ever decide to sell one of these multimeters, there won't be a cable with it because I don't have one. So if you know where I can get these plugs, these Solotron plugs, cheaply, I don't want to spend $100 on one then let me know because I'll be interested in probably buying a couple so I've got ones to use, at least I can make up different cables potentially or potentially if I decide to sell one of these meters then I'll, I'll be able to make a cable up to go with it I, I believe you can still get these but I can't remember what they're called I did have some information on them, I did find something there's a model number on this plug Fisher connector so if you know where to get these connectors from for the Salatrons, let me know right, should we power it up? I think we should power it up it's plugged in, We've got power applied, let's turn the switch on the back Fortunately, there's a switch on the back. Let's try and find it. It's here somewhere. There it is. So turn it on. Display is working. Right now, I've got Ben Johnston's PDVST mini set up here. I haven't powered up yet. I should do that. He's going to top me off because I'm using it wrong. Because it's not meant to be used vertically, it's used horizontally. But I've done this so you can see what I'm doing. So it won't be exactly accurate, especially as I've only just turned everything on. Right, so let's chuck a voltage out of this. One volt coming out. There's one volt with lots of digits. Nice. So you can see it drifting around a little bit as it all warms up. Let's say this is marked as being calibrated, but I know this is going to be very accurate. Although that said, this was about a year ago and I got this now. So calibration could have drifted. I don't know, Ian, maybe you can chime in and tell me your experience of drifting on these things. Whether the calibration drifts off by much over that time. I don't know. 
I imagine they're pretty good, but you know, as anything, when they're brand new, they'll gradually age. I mean, I know he does use aging when he builds these, so it probably isn't too bad drift wise, but there could be still some drifting as, as you normally get. This is why really old gear generally is quite good because the drift has already happened, they've already aged, and they've already settled. Whereas new stuff takes a little while to settle down. So, this is say, was brand new a year ago. Maybe, say, Ian can give me some insight into whether this is likely to drift it off or not. But as you can see, I've got five decimal places of accuracy on here. Now, because this is a 20 bit device and being digital, it's not perfect. The very last digit could be, you know, a, a zero, it could be a one, it could be a two, it could be a three, it could be a eight or a nine, even the very last digit over here for the rounding and stuff like that. So, there is information on the calibration for this thing from an Ian Dead original calibration, so that does tell me that at the time of calibration, obviously. But it's now a year later and things have probably changed slightly. But as you can see here, it's, you know, 70 odd counts off here so it's at uh, millivolts at 69 microvolts different which is you know the six here is the last digit on this so it's like six counts out so i believe though this will be what's wrong because um, it's only as accurate as the, as the guy that did the previous calibration on this you know or well, you might find you see it's drifting downwards it may be that this once has been on for an hour or three it will be okay you know, maybe it's 24 hours, it'll be, be alright because you know, this side of the gear is meant to be on for long periods of time, so it could be that this will be on for 24 hours before it comes right. And you see it's drifting downwards, so it may get there eventually. Um, you know, you shouldn't do any, any calibration assessments basically on something which has only just been powered up, like I've done three minutes ago, kind of thing. But I'm just verifying that it does what it's supposed to do. Right, so 10 volts there. So I play with the timing stuff a little bit on this thing, is delay, you can play with that. I've only fiddled with it slightly, I've still got a lot to learn about how to use this thing. There's a Solitron and they've got you know, a pretty good reputation. It is relatively stable, it's not changing by a huge amount, considering the resolution we're looking at here. But uh, you can see that because I've gone to 10 volts, it's shifted over one digit and that digit is also out by the same amount. All right. So this is not going to be out by that much, nowhere near it. So that is um, 630 microvolts different compared to this. So maybe the, the last digit will be potentially wrong, but volts seems to work fine, okay? At least it's working at least on 10 volts, and it's drifting closer and closer. So I'm not too worried about that. I might leave it on for a period of time, actually, and see how it comes in the end once it's settled down. All right, let's test resistance out. I'll just play around trying to figure out which cable I'm supposed to use, because I don't remember. <laughs> you know, I've got all four wires hooked up in here. I think I've got it all set up right. This is still nulling on this. I've got it set to zero right now, I think. Yep, so let's null that. Okay, so that now says zero. Now this isn't a precision box, obviously, right? This is just a generic kind of substitution box. It isn't precise. If I want to do precise measurements, I'm using my Fluke 5450A, which is the other side of the room there. And eventually I will do that. But for now, I just want to do some basic tests and see what actually happens. So this is do 10 ohms. Okay, it's not far off. One ohm. Yep. 100 ohms. Yep. 1k. Again, I don't expect these to be, to be perfect. They're not a precision box. This is 10k. And 100k. Alright, let's do 100k. So that's looking all right. It's at least working. So the accuracy, I, who knows, right? I'll have to put this on my fluke to see what's going on there. That seems all right. It's at least working. It's also got the true IMS, well, the true ohms here, which is a little different. Let's see that's a 900 again. But I've already got four wires hooked up anyway. So the true isn't showing anything. It might, was it, it might be sampling rate. Let's give it a minute. It might take a sample. Here we go. Longer sample time. So, again, same thing I've got before basically, on the standard ohms. Yep, very slightly different. So it's obviously the true is using four wire, ohms is using two wire, but I'm using four wire connections anyway. Um, 
yeah so anyway resistance seems to basically be working all right so now it's testing the current now the current's done differently it's actually got a special connector on the back it's just a couple of banana jacks on the back there i've just used one of my pomona cables here it's straight from the back straight into the power supply i'm currently shoving in about 100 milliamps and uh that's what it says so the current mode also seems to be working now it can do up to two amps so it's just uh wind this up slightly just do one amp i don't want to stress it too much so i verify it works yep that's fine that's all good so current mode seems to work too obviously the only thing i've got to check yet is ac and i'll do that when i hook it up to my calibrator when i get my gear set up so it does basically appear to be working which is great so this also came with a couple of bags of bits let's open these up and see what's actually in here now i think the mac the brackets for the sides are there calibration key cool it's good to have it's got this other special connector here which is for the back it's got a um, channel one reference input on the back there another little mini connector it's similar sort of style to this thing but smaller it's a bit of a weird one anyway sc it's a ta 5fl connector apparently yeah so that goes in the back for channel one which is i think it's used for reference or ratio measurements because it's got a ratio option and you've got the front handles we obviously took these off for shipping so they wouldn't get damaged which is great so that's nice so i can put those back on it was a little bit slow to post this thing i wasn't really too bothered it's not like i was waiting for it but it took i think three weeks two three weeks before we posted it something like that but then it arrived in a week so you know it did quite well and the poster is actually a reasonable price as well it came from spain so the other side of the planet too so we've got a Amphenol connector. All oh, right, okay. Cable's been cut off. So this is a GPIB cable connector. Unfortunately, no cable, but it's just a cable, right? <laughs> I've got some GPIB cables anyway, and I haven't played with GPIB anyway. I do mean to do GPIB and play with stuff and put bits of gear up and try remote control and things like that, and just experiment a bit with that. I've never done it. Um, I've got the gear, I've got the GPIB adapter, I've got the GPIB to USB adapter, I've got one of them, and cables and stuff like that, so I just need to sit down and play with it one day. But anyway, it's got a connector, so this really just needs a cable to go with it. Interesting way to destroy a cable, rather than didn't destroy the cable and just keep the connector. I mean, a bit of a strange thing, anyway. And there's a, hmm, interestingly correct plug. Weird. Why has he got one of them? You must have actually sourced that. That's strange. But it's got this kind of cable which isn't really great. Single insulated cable. Eh, 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 eh. Throw it in the bin. No, because if you nick those cables and it's alive, the insulation is pretty thin on these things. You know, it won't be much of it. But I'm surprised it's got a New Zealand plug on it. I'm actually really surprised by that. I mean, the guy I got this from, he seemed nice enough, you know. Um, and it looks like it's gone to the extra effort of making sure I've got the correct plug. I know he changed the voltage input on the back here already for my country and changed the fuse already for me. I know he already did that to make sure it's all ready, ready to go. And he's also sourced the plug for me as well. That's maybe why there's a bit of a delay as well. I don't know, I might check that as a side as maybe an emergency cable for something, but personally I wouldn't use this kind of cable. Uh, just, yeah, this makes me nervous about single insulated mains cables. Calibration I'm not completely confident with yet. I'll so I have to leave this on for a period of time and see what it settles down to compare against my other bits of gear. Although none of my gear is officially calibrated, apart from one thing actually, my HP 3457A that is calibrated, NISC traceable when I got it. So that's something I kind of trust. But then I have issues with disagreeing with some other things which I believe are correct. So don't 100% trust it. Don't forget to watch the playlist at the end of the video. You know, I've got all these mailbag videos there, lots of different repairs and electronic stuff, and all my old stuff which I did years ago. It's all there too, and much of it has had very few views because chances are you haven't seen it. I've got some quite, quite nice technical stuff in there as well, so go and check all that stuff out. Playlist at the end, or my just general playlist on my channel. Just go to the playlist on my channel, and you'll see all these different stuff I've got there. I've got stuff dedicated to certain bits of equipment, like the Datrons. I've got a playlist just for Datrons, things like that, um, or the HP stuff, or whatever. I, when I do a series on a piece of gear, I'll make a playlist for it. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Thanks for Patreon supporters, you're all really appreciated. If you want to help support my channel, help me to buy things like this, then Patreon is definitely a way to go there. So I'd appreciate it. I think it's like two dollars a month is like the lowest you can do. I think, I think one dollar a month. I've limited that one because the Patreon fees meant I was only getting a proportion of it, not a big proportion of it. So I've changed that now. So one dollar 
are no longer available. I've, I've limited that, so the lowest one you can do now is two dollars, two dollars a month. That is, so not a huge big amount either. I do have some great patrons that have been very generous, and I really appreciate everyone that has taken the time to donate to my channel. So if you're interested in helping support me for mailbag or bits of gear, catch you later. Thanks a lot. Bye.